Hello, my name is Russell. I'm an interpreter here in our Paspahe Town site at Jamestown Settlement. And my name is Sammy as well. I'm an interpreter here in our town site. Today we're going to be talking about ducks in Senecumaco, or Virginia, around about the time that the English arrived, but focusing on Powhatan relationship with these animals and a little bit about cooking them here on Poultry Day. In Virginia, which the Powhatan originally would term Senecomaca, many animals and fowl are going to be hunted routinely by the people. And what we're focusing on today is going to be duck. There are many varieties of wild duck here in Virginia, especially in the Chesapeake Bay and the rivers as they uh, run down from the mountains to the bay. Powhatan are going to be hunting a slew of these uh, animals, and they're going to have a variety of different terms for different ducks, some of which are actually recorded. Pisco end, or at least a version of that word, is going to be a, a somewhat of a general term for duck, whereas drakes and other ducks might be termed a raukwau. And along with that, there are widgeons and shell drakes and all sorts of uh, duck terms listed. Powhatan are going to be intimately acquainted with all of these animals and hunting them on somewhat of an opportunistic or year-round basis, but largely and likely in the fall, winter, and early springtime, they'll be hunting these animals primarily with a longbow and arrows, the English say made of wood or sometimes cane, headed with sprigs of bone for bringing down birds. English accounts of Powhatan effectiveness with the bow reference that they shoot the birds in the air and that even a boy of 12 or 13 is said to have shot a bird from the air with his bow in front of an Englishman who later writes the account. There are varying English descriptions of Powhatan and other eastern woodland people's food ways and seasoning is certainly something that factors into it. Certain accounts from the English and others reference some of the food that they eat with their native hosts as being fairly bland, others reference it as being fairly spicy. And although there are vague references to some spices here in colonial Virginia or Tenacomica that were used by the Powhatan, one references a spicy root applied to many foods, which is not further identified. There are other accounts of oils and things and sauces being served with venison and dried meats. And beyond that, we have very little that is uh, dated to this time period that specifically references seasonings in the foodways of the Powhatan. However, there are a variety of native plants in the eastern woodlands that we know were used by different tribes and likely by the Powhatan group to season their foods. So you have plants such as wild ginger, <clears throat> sassafras, juniper berries, and even uh, wax myrtle leaves that are commonly known to be harvested, dried, or even ground or, or roasted, and then used as seasonings uh, with seafood and different types of meat, soups and stews and vegetables. Sure that smells good already. Here we are demonstrating the use of a hurdle. Uh, these hurdles are based on English accounts. Um, if you notice, we have a, a duck that is being roasted. It's cooking with direct heat. Uh, here on the top, we have a front shoulder of white-tailed deer that is cooking with indirect heat or drying. Uh, the smoke constantly enveloping the meat is going to slowly dry that meat. Here we have a section of, of ribs of white-tailed deer that have been completely dried on the hurdle and are ready for winter stores. These would be stored in the upper framework of the haken, or house. Feathers from the ducks, some of them can be used to fletch more arrows. 
Some of them will even be used to twine or work into feather coats and mantles that some of the English sources say are exceedingly warm and handsome. There is a woman of status, Powhatan woman of status, referenced as having a blue feather coat so finely woven of mallard wing feathers that it covered her body in a purple shine or sheen. Heating my pot with hot coals. <clears throat> this is typical of a Palatine style cook pot or Eastern Woodland style cook pot. It's made from clay that's been uh, infused with crushed oyster shells as a method of tempering the pot. It's going to keep this pot from cracking or fraction under high heat or stress. Uh, the coals not only stabilize the pot but evenly distribute that heat. Today inside our pot, we have a mixture of dried squash, corn, beans. <clears throat> the net from our mallard duck is going to provide a good flavor to our soup. Um, and there we have as well sassafras to give flavor and juniper berries. Yep, so uh, we're uh, still in the process of roasting this duck over the fire here, along with some other cooking that we've got going on. And this is at about the two and a half hour mark that we've had the duck over the fire here, rotating it from time to time and sort of watching it cook and the fat starting to come down. This is uh, two and a half hours over a direct flame um, with a pretty windy conditions. And you can see that the majority of the outside of the duck is plenty well cooked and that we're letting it sort of sit and stay on this heat and make sure we're thoroughly cooking it to the inside. But with the Powhatan preferred method of the people coming and going to their family kitchens and eating throughout the day, a duck or a leg of venison or something may be cooked on the outside and people may be picking at it and eating it and adding it into soups and stews throughout the day so that you're constantly exposing the meat underneath to be cooked instead of rushing to cook it all at once. Depending on the species of duck and what it is that they eat, the meat tends to have a different character. However, duck in general is fairly fatty, and if you're people living off of the land here, not dealing with a lot of modern processed foods, fatty foods are generally sought after. Hey, that just don't look no good. Mm -mm -mm. I'll hold Thanks. it for you. Mm -hmm.
that's really good. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. And uh, I'm going to cut into the other mm -hmm. uh, I'll hold. I'll come over. Yep. As I see, yeah, we can uh, hold it yeah. right here. Cut the bottom half. You okay, can have that'll way. work. Delicious. Well done. Mm -hmm. Well, after a good couple hours, the duck is uh, certainly finished and wonderful as usual. Thank you for joining us today on uh, National Poultry Day. And uh, if you like our video, uh, remember to like, subscribe, and uh, leave your comments below.